So this is going to be kind of a weird video. We're talking about two of my favorite teams that are playing later today, one of which is obviously playing a lot earlier than the other, and a bunch of updates in regards to injuries, because this kind of came out of nowhere, and I do think that it is worth bringing up just for the sake of talking about roster updates and other things like that. So today we're talking about the Canadians and we're also talking about the Vancouver Canucks, starting out with the news tweeted out by the Canadians' Twitter account earlier this morning. Defenseman Caden Gooley, who has an upper body injury, and he's day to day, as well as Arbor Jackai, who also has an upper body injury, further update to come pending evaluation, will not be available to play tonight. Defenseman Justin Barron was recalled from the Laval Rocket in an emergency capacity. Now, I did see some people going out there and asking, okay, wait, like, where exactly did this happen? Ghoulie and Jackai both getting taken out at the same time. For Ghoulie, it's a lot easier to try to conclude where this is coming from. It may just happen to do with some guy who is at the top of the NHL in points. Thank you very much, Nikita Kucherov. But as for Arbor Jackai, there were a few other plays that you could say where he might have gotten a little bit tainted up. But either way, you know, it's going to be rough seeing two of the Canadians' top young guys on the blue line missing some time, at the very least a day-to-day -day capacity. Now, there was some conversation as well as to why Justin Barron is being the guy that is called up from Laval, and at the same time, you know, Laval, they're playing a game right now, I'm pretty sure. David Reinbacher scored a goal, which is nice to see, but seeing this team lose out on more of its players because of injuries with the main club, of course, it's gotta hurt the Laval Rockets' playoff odds themselves. They have themselves their own race going on, so... They need their support, they need their guys. If the Montreal Canadiens can stay healthy and prevent any extra call-ups from Laval, that would be beneficial to all parties involved here. Also, I saw a lot of people kind of upset. Okay, maybe not upset. Upset's a little bit too strong of a word. Just kind of bummed out that we wouldn't be able to see an Arbor Jackai Matt Rempe thing against the New York Rangers later on. So, yeah, that's an extra idea that I think some people might have had in the back of their minds, but... Maybe not everybody was too anticipatory of that, but still, it was something to go out there and watch. Hopefully, whilst in Laval, David Reinbacher can use this opportunity with no Justin Barron to step up a little bit more and get a bit more minutes because, hey, he scored a goal today, so that's already a plus. Any other extra development that he's got and comfort that he shows off at the Laval Rocket level I think is going to be a good thing as well. Not to mention Logan Mayu, who has been a big beast for the Rocket, too. It's not the worst thing in the world, but still. Interesting to note, Jackai and Gooley are both out. It's always been kind of a pattern, right? Like the Montreal Canadiens and their injury woes, how so many guys get injured time in and time out. Obviously, you know, knock on wood, it doesn't change any more than it already has, with the two extra guys being placed on the shelf. But I also wanted to talk about my first favorite team, the Vancouver Canucks, as they go out there and play the LA Kings later today. What I wanted to focus on was this article published on The Province, written out by Patrick Johnston. Take a look at this. This kind of goes out there and gives more info as to what's been going on with the team. Canucks. A brutal wrist injury kept Elias Lindholm out of the lineup. Now he is almost back. This was published earlier yesterday. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and read this. The Canucks center, who has been out of action, joined his teammates for practice Friday in L.A. This article opens up by talking about how Demko isn't the only injured Canuck who's coming closer to a return, so too is Elias Lindholm. The Canuck center, who has been out of action with a suspected wrist injury, joined his teammates for practice on Friday in LA. He last played March 23rd against the Calgary Flames. The article then says that the Canucks really were hush-hush about his injury, only really describing him as day-to-day. But after Friday's practice, Lindholm told Sportsnet that he had a wrist injury that had been brutal, quote-unquote. He injured it a few games before March 23rd, he said. One source suggested to Post Media he suffered the injury March 5th in LA. He was arriving late to the bench following the first intermission that game, the implication being that he injured the wrist in the first period, though a video review of his shifts didn't suggest any particular collision that might have caused a wrist injury. 
So this is kind of alarming, right? I mean, we'd heard earlier on that for Elias Lindholm, there might have been an injury that was lurking for a few days. This wasn't an, oh, he just got injured right now, let's make him day-to-day -day kind of thing. There was always a bunch of speculation saying, yeah, he probably was hurt for a while. And we were wondering, okay, how long is a gosh darn while? Because was there already an injury with Lindholm when he was in Calgary and then he got sent over here and that's when he started to falter in terms of point production? He had the good first game and what else? But it turns out that if you go over to the timeline of things here, if it's suspected that he was hurt around the March 5th area, then that would have been, of course, against the LA Kings. Elias Lindholm had three points in the following, what is that? Three, six, eight games after that. So if we assume that this is the proper timeline after getting hurt, Elias Lindholm had a goal and two assists in eight games, which unfortunately is a little bit of a step up from the production that he had earlier. I mean, he was still kind of all over the place, up and down with his point production. He was already in a little bit of a slump heading into that injury, but either way, there are a few extra things written about here in the article. Whenever it was that he had suffered the injury, he tried to play on, but he also decided to take some time off to let the injury heal. A hand specialist was also consulted, previous reports said. It's been kind of brutal to deal with, Lindholm told Ian McIntyre. Obviously, you're using it a lot, and when I played, it wasn't getting better. We're in a pretty good spot in the standing, so it was a good time to step away and let it heal. I feel pretty good for now. And that is a very good thing as well, where Elias Lindholm, even though he recognizes that he might still be able to play, he's like, yeah, we're pretty good in the standings, we've already clinched, we're gonna have ourselves a postseason spot, so there isn't really any reason for me to exert too much effort and potentially worsen the injury. So, I like that mindset, rest him up, if he's 100% for the playoffs, then that will be prime. This Vancouver Canucks team has already been pretty good defensively the past few games. I know I've been kind of harping on their offense, and Elias Lindholm not producing much doesn't help in that respect at all, but they have been a very solid defensive team the past little while here, and with Elias Lindholm and his defensively-minded hockey coming into the lineup at 100%, hopefully there is more to be gained out of that acquisition than lost. Now, this article also goes out there and talks about Thatcher Demko. It says that he's been making progress, and the ultimate update here is that it's believed Demko will be ready to return the game action sometime next week. Though, Rick Tockett was once again cautious in discussing when his number one netminder might return to action. We already knew that the period in which Demko would be allowed to return after being placed on the LTIR was actually today, April 6th, but if it's going to take a little bit longer, that's okay. Casey DeSmith has been fine. Arthur Seelobs has been surprisingly amazing. Okay, maybe not surprisingly amazing. He's just been amazing. He's been fine. So the Canucks with this tandem... While it's true that you could see that they play a little bit differently when it's not Thatcher Demko in net versus when it's Casey DeSmith or Artur Silovs, they're still finding ways to get some points. I would prefer more offense, which I think a lot of Canucks fans would say they prefer the same, but still, as the Elias Lindholm philosophy states, the team is pretty locked in in the postseason right now. They have a good standing amongst the rest of the league, so there's a lot of good going on here with the Vancouver Canucks and as their team gets healthier, hopefully we see a little bit more of that. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Firstly, about the Montreal Canadiens and how Arbor Jacquet and Caden Gooley are both injured. We had ourselves the call up of Justin Barron to mitigate that. And what are your thoughts about the Vancouver Canucks heading into tonight's game against the LA Kings? I cannot wait to get extraordinarily frustrated by the 1-3-1 once again and see the Vancouver Canucks succumb to the ultimate trap system that is being played in hockey nowadays. Thoughts in the comment section below. What are your thoughts about the injuries and the transactions? What are your thoughts as well about the coming games for both of these two teams? I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rosnayana. And bye.